This is a KMVT sports presentation. Prep football on KMVT this evening. Tonight, one of the better intersectional rivalries in the Bay Area, the Skyline Titans at 1-1 one one in town to visit the winless St. Francis Lancers. And along with Brian Burkett, I'm George Devine. And St. Francis up against the wall at 0-3, Brian. But a lot of folks around here remember 1993 when they started the same way. Yeah, no question about it. The Skyline Titans are a very good football team. Certainly St. Francis, also a good football team, but they just need a win. And Mike Mitchell's troops hoping to get that W tonight. If you remember 1993, it was the end. They came into the Skyline game at 0-3. There was a zero on the scoreboard at the end of that night. St. Francis 6, Skyline nothing. And after that, the Lancers ran off 26 straight. That streak lasted until they lost here to Skyline last year. Skyline with the usual assortment of top talent on the West Coast, highlighted by Ernest Newell, one of the heroes of last year's game. Yeah, Ernest Newell is a very good player, and he had a lot of rejections harassing the St. Francis quarterback last season. This is a very good Skyline defense. They held Logan eight points, even though Skyline lost that game. Very good defensive club and a very good defensive outing in that game. And head coach John Beam hoping for more of the same tonight. So John Beam and Skyline, they've scored all of their points in the second half. The Lancers looking to find a little magic here tonight as they try to avoid going 0-4 as they return here to Brother Fisher Owasco Field and Ron Calcano Stadium on the St. Francis campus. Welcome back to Ron Calcagno Stadium at Brother Fisher Owasco Field on this cool September evening. And once again, along with Brian Burkett, I'm George Devine. Skyline, a much improved club in terms of its kicking game this year, Brian. Last year, that was something that was missing from John Beam's arsenal. Yeah, and this year, a kicker in the fold, Michael Ramos, 5'8", 190-pound junior, will handle the kicking chores. Skyline winning the toss, so we won't get to see Ramos here, but we will get to see the Lancers kicker, Brian Ball. So Brian Ball, who's expected to put it in the end zone each time he puts it up, and John Bean trying to figure out the strategy. If the ball is kicked into the end zone, he's going to have to start from his 20, but he's got some speedsters in case it isn't. Just waiting for a football to come out on the field to balls like it. Deep for the Titans, Leon McDaniel, number seven. And number eight, Anthony Limbrick. Limbrick, a considered an All-American prospect in the preseason, listed in a lot of the magazines. And Bell puts it in play for the Lancers. And it's to Limbrick's side. He takes it at the 11. 49-yard kick. Limbrick trying to find some real estate to work with. Out to the 23, where he's brought down. And so Skyline didn't have to deal with a touchback, but they do work from the shallow end of the field. And Skyline, a very good team offensively. Even though they haven't scored any points in the first half this season, they're a very fast team offensively, and they like to ground the ball out with guys such as Anthony Limbrook, Leon McDaniel, Ernest Newell. We touched on a couple of those guys on the open, and here we go with first down. Damian Bouchelon in his first game at quarterback is in the middle. Ryan Fernandez, the receiver to the near side. Anthony Limbrook to the far side. McDaniel and Canyon in the backfield. Charles Tharp on a corner steps up at the bottom of your screen. And the first give of the game is to Joe Cannon, the fullback. Take a chance to set the offensive line of the Titans for you. Noah Miller is the tight end. Terrell Butler at 305 is the right tackle. William Bonner, Hassani Davenport, Mawali Davis, and Hassan Dika from right guard over to left tackle, respectively. Titans pick up seven. They look at a second and three from the 30. Again, Cannon and McDaniel in the backfield. And they look again to Cannon. He carries close to the first down. Stopped by the middle of the Lancer line, which is anchored tonight by Nick Garcia. Mike Owen on one corner, Charles Tharp on the other. Jason Trainan, Jason Jackson join Garcia up front. 
Take a look at Mike Mitchell. He's also the defensive coordinator for the Lancers. James Lentz and Scott Olsace, the defensive ends. Robbie Meebach, second week back from injury, starts at linebacker Charlie Nunley on the other side. It's first and 10 from the 33. And they call Cannon's number again. Brings it over the right side. Make it McDaniel. Cannon was leading the block. So a pickup of a couple for the Titans. But as you said, Brian, Skyline keeping it on the ground in the early going, playing to their strengths and the strong side of their line. One of the guys I didn't mention, Joe Cannon, getting a lot of ball carrying time here in the early going and doing quite well so far. Skyline doing nothing but running the ball. Fourth play of the game for the Titans. The first three have been rushing plays. They bring Fernandez wide to the right. He's going to be shadowed by Tharp. But they keep it on the ground. McDaniel gets the call. Breaks free on the second effort. He was wrapped up by Lentz. So tough inside yardage right there for the Titans. Big test for the Skyline offense, but also a bigger test for the St. Francis defense. Skyline trying to get a good opening drive going and maybe put some points on the board in the first half, something they haven't done all season. St. Francis defensively, that core, they've really been toasted. They were burned a couple of weeks ago here against Oak Grove. Last week, the defense gave up a lead at Hollister and lost to the Hay Bailers. Third and two from the 43. And they keep it on the ground again. McDaniel over the right side. He's got some daylight as Machado ropes him up inside Lancer territory. But after he picks up the first down. Good looking drive for the Titans right off the bat. Last season, Skyline able to come down here and get the win against St. Francis. Huge hole on the right side. And McDaniel going for the huge yardage, picking up the first down before Machado tripped him up. Good looking drive for John Beams Club opening things up tonight. 13 yards on that last run for McDaniel. Now they bring two receivers wide to the right. They go out of the eye for the first time tonight. McDaniel from the back of the eye. He runs into trouble right off the bat and goes nowhere. Bottom of that pile for the Lancers, Charlie Nunley. Right now, very easy to keep an eye on Damian Bouchelon's passing totals because he hasn't thrown the ball. It's been six straight rushing plays for the Titans, and they're looking very good on this opening drive. That time, the Lancer defense held the running back to only a yard gain. But still, Skyline looking tough, and really the offensive line of the Titans controlling the line of scrimmage. Lancers let a yard go on that play. It's second and nine coming up. And they go with... Cannon, and he's wrapped up as he crosses the line. Old Sace, the defensive end, right in his face. Robbie Meebach also getting his first hit of the night. There's a situation coming up right here where Bouchelon might be forced to air it out. Yeah, could be looking at the first passing play of the game for John Beam's club. Big test for the Lancer defense. They've got a third down situation. They've got to stop Skyline here because at the moment, Skyline has not had any difficulty getting the yardage on the ground, picking up the first downs. They've moved it inside the Lancers end of the field. Pivotal play early on in the contest. Third and seven from the 40. They need to make the 33 for a first down. And Bouchelon throwing for the first time today. And he has an open Anthony Limbrick, but he's well short of the first down. Machado on the tackle. Good containment over there. Machado, one of the Lancers over there to prevent the first down. And that's a good, good defensive recovery by the St. Francis Lancers. Mike Mitchell's team has given up a lot of big first downs this year. They've seen teams march down the field. The Lancers with a nice stop on third down. Looks like they might have to come up with a stop on fourth down. The Titans appear to be going for it. It's fourth and three. The ball just outside of the 35. They need to make it to the 33. Keep your eye on Joe Cannon out of the backfield. But instead, they go with McDaniel. And he's nowhere close to it. Met head on by Machado again. Excellent job by the Lancer defense. Mike Mitchell, the head coach and defensive coordinator, has to be pleased. You know the student body loves it. This is a defense that came in here a little apprehensive. They've given up some big plays and a nice stop after giving up a lot of yardage on that opening drive to the Titans. They come up with a big fourth down prevention. Good job getting into the backfield was Todd Pavlovich to trip up the running back and the Lancers offense is on the field for the first time. So Jason Luker at the controls trying to get the Lancers on the board and he gives to Charles Tharp on the first offensive play of the game. 
And Tharp dives out to the 43. Picking up seven to set up a second and three. We'll take a chance to set the Lancer offense for you. Tharp in the backfield, joined tonight by James Lentz. Ryan Schmuck, the tight end. Grant Matos and Tim Cross are the wideouts. Gross, Riccoboni, Smith, Winters, and Powell up front. Smith and Gross, the two veterans in that group. Here's second and three. Luker throwing an open Matos. He's got the first down, and he's chased out of bounds right away by Antonio Thompson, one of the skyline safeties. Take a chance here to set the Titan offense for you. As we mentioned, Thompson in the secondary, along with Dwayne Taylor, David Robinson on the corner, and Anthony Limbrick playing safety, the only two-way man on this club. Pierre Crosby and Sterling Burroughs are the linebackers. Maurice Bostic, Derek May, Frank abdul Rahman up front, along with Roger Ratcliffe and Ernest Newell. Pitch out to Lentz. Could be trouble for the Lancers. Lentz falls down. But the Lancers suffer a big loss on first and ten. Good recovery by Lentz to backtrack and prevent the turnover. John Beam's defense, a swarming defense. They utilize that speed and size. And the Lancers offensively have to be careful. Mike Mitchell would like to see his team put together a nice opening drive. Jason Luker getting better with each game. He's still maturing at that quarterback position. This is his first year as the varsity QB. They give up 10 yards. Nothing, nothing ball game. 5.43 in the first quarter. And a quick look to cross. He's back to the original line of scrimmage on this series to pick up 10. And he stays in bounds. He was brought down by Skyline's number 28, David Robinson. That was a heck of a catch by Cross, lunging to get it. Take a look. Luker showing a lot of poise, getting pretty good protection, hung in the pocket nicely, and then the lunging reception by Cross to get some of that yardage back. The key for Luker this year is how much time he has, and it seems that he's gotten a little more every way. Clock down to 5-10. Lancer's looking to be first on the board. They go with dual wide receivers to the left. Luker throwing towards Tharp. It's incomplete, but there's a flag down. Good pressure applied by Pierre Crosby, one of the linebackers. Derek May appeared to be held by one of the Lancer offensive linemen. This penalty should be declined by the Titans. It is holding against St. Francis, and John Beam's team is going to get the ball and set up a fourth down. So the Lancers facing a third and nine. Make it a fourth and nine as Skyline declines the penalty on third down. Chuck Camuso, the referee tonight, wearing the white hat, dropping back to punt Antonio Thompson. Brian Bell handles the punting chores as well for Mike Mitchell. He's got a lot of time to get this one off. And Thompson will take it from his own 14. And so he doesn't go very far. Lancer's keeping him on the ground, 31-yard effort. And so Skyline takes over with 4.51. So each team an extended possession and nothing doing. Good defense early going. And you look at the series, George. Defensive struggles have been the rule rather than the exception. They've only had a couple of games that have really been blowouts. A 23 to nothing Lancer win the first time these two teams ever got together. A couple of years ago, the Lancers beat Skyline 21 to 7. But usually these two teams play low scoring defensive tussles. Second look at the Skyline offense, and McDaniel gets the call on first and 10. Chased by Old Saints, and now he goes down after trying to run a lot of east-west yardage. So we'll take it downstairs to Andre Polizzi. As all of you guys know, traditionally these two schools have played some low-scoring defensive battles, including a 6-6 tie and a 6-0 shutout for St. Francis. Last year, a 12-6 game, as you saw from the first two drives. Back and forth, neither team able to do it. And I'll have more for you guys in just a little bit. So second and four coming up. We might see a lot of ball played between the 30s tonight. They're on the 25 this time. And they fake to McDaniel. Bouchelon looks right. And he tried to throw to a receiver in traffic. That was his tight end, Meller. And nothing was going on with Josh. It's only the second pass attempt for Skyline tonight. That time, Bouchelon rolled out of the pocket. Good pressure on the quarterback by the Lancer defense. This has been a series, as you can see, dominated by St. Francis, although last year Skyline came away with the win. 
one of the better intersectional rivalries and the Lancers began and ended their 26 game winning streak which spanned the better part of three seasons against these Titans. Skyline out of the eye on third and short and flags go flying something John Beam has wanted to work on his team being racked up for a lot of penalties the last couple of weeks especially on the offensive line. Got to show some discipline up front. Looked like Hassani Davenport jumped the gun a little bit, and Chuck Camuso marks off the five yards. You go to last year's game, John Beam was very pleased with the way his club played down here at Brother Fisher Field last year in that 12-6 win. Jason Cooper scoring a couple of touchdowns for Skyline in the winning effort. So last week, Skyline penalized for 95 yards, 11 separate flags thrown, trying to avoid a repeat performance. Third and nine. And they go with McDaniel. So he's short. Skyline will be forced to punt. St. Francis's sideline certainly pumped up that time. The Titan running game went nowhere. You throw the penalty in there. And a three play and out sequence for the Titans sets up the punt. So they show punt. Thompson steps back into punt formation. Tharp the deep man for the Lancers. And Favre has an eye on it, and he'll take it on the run from his own 43. If he can get around the corner, he'll have some light in front of him. And he's knocked down as he crosses the skyline 40. So a 32-yard punt, Favre on the return. Across midfield into Skyline territory. The Lancers with good field position. Yeah, good return by Charles Tharp. Kind of reminds you of Eric Lewis, a Lancer of days gone by. He'd get back there and return kicks, and you never knew if he was going to go east, west, north, south. Most of the time, Lewis wound up in the end zone. Tharp would like to get into the end zone here as the Lancers get the ball for the second time in a scoreless game. The 18-yard return sets up good field position at the 39. Luker pitches to Tharp. Let's see if his feet stay hot. And he's out after picking up a few. Thompson driving him out of bounds, getting some help from Abdul Rahman, somebody that John Beam really likes, but you haven't seen in the big prep magazine so far this year. Well, Skyline's very talented. They only lost by a couple of points to a very tough Logan team in Union City. And really, St. Francis tonight, yeah, they'd like to get Tharp involved, but they've also got to open up the passing game a little bit because a lot of teams lately have been keying on Charles Tharp and holding him to maybe big days offensively, but the passing game doesn't do anything and the offense goes nowhere. On second and four from the 35, it's Tharp over the middle, and he's tied up by Abdul Rachman. Kind of like that Barry Sanders syndrome with the Detroit Lions. If you can stop Barry Sanders, you can just, just stop the Detroit Lions from doing anything because they can't seem to pass the ball. Of course, lately, Scott Mitchell getting the receivers involved and the Lions doing much better. Charles Tharp, last year, the two times he was held under 100 yards, the Lancers lost. Last week, he ran for more than 100 yards, but the Lancers still fell anyway to Hollister 17-7. So that analogy not helping St. Francis last week. They're trying to get in the end zone, 1.54 to go, first period. And a third and three coming up from the 32. And they give to Tharp nowhere to run to, nowhere to hide, but he's close. Limbrick comes in on the tackle with help from Pierre Crosby. Tharp took a major shot from Limbrick. Limbrick came right in there, and it was like running into a brick because Charles Tharp, the moment Limbrick made the hit, he went right down and didn't go any further. Tough decision here for Mike Mitchell. It's fourth and one at the Skyline 30, and Mitchell's going for it. And we're running against the wind right now towards the windy end of the field, towards the oak tree. Fourth and one. Ball just outside of the 30, cross in motion. They give to Tharp. There's a mix-up, and it's recovered by Skyline. On it for the Titans is Dwayne Taylor, number 20. So Taylor comes up with the loose ball, and Skyline stops a potentially threatening Lancer drive with 102 left in the first period. First turnover of the game, second time the Lancers have fumbled. This one, Skyline is able to cover. Good job by Taylor, snuffing the play out. 
bad exchange between Luker and Tharp, it looked like. The ball wound up on the ground, and those are the type of mistakes. When you get into the fourth and fifth games of your season, you have to eliminate those mistakes. And that's one reason the Lancers have been struggling. They haven't eliminated those mistakes, and now Skyline gets the ball back. Skyline with the ball on their own 38, 102 left in the first period. They give to McDaniel. He's got a little room to run over the left side. James Lentz over there on the stop. Getting some help from Mike Gross. So a pickup of four. That'll set up a second and six. John Beam with the clipboard. Trying to see if he can make it two in a row over the Lancers here in Mountain View. John with sore knees this week. And they give to McDaniel again. He goes over the middle. Burley in there for the first time tonight in on the stop. But the real shock absorbed by Todd Pavlovich. Coming down to the end of the first quarter, Burley getting a stick in there. Been a defensive struggle. Nothing surprising about that. The series has been primarily a defense-oriented series. Last year, a low-scoring game. And another one, it looks like, through 12 minutes this evening. That'll do it for the first quarter. So 12 minutes have been played, and we're no closer to settling this ball game than we were when we started is nothing, nothing. And as advertised, Skyline and St. Francis playing a tight game. Yeah, really, uh, John Beam going over things with his offense here as Skyline will keep the ball going into the second quarter. Skyline moved the ball well on that opening drive. They went for it on the fourth down. Nice stop by the St. Francis defense, giving them some hope. But then the Lancers coming back, unable to do anything with the ball. One turnover in the quarter by the St. Francis Lancers, and we've got a scoreless game. Let's visit with Andre Polizzi on the sideline. Those of you who got to join us for the Mountain View telecast of the Mountain View football game last week and saw one of the longest high school football games I can remember. That one took over two and a half hours. We had a lot of penalties in that game, constant mistakes, forcing penalties. In this one, a very fast first quarter, less than 25 minutes, just two flags thrown. One of them picked up after the penalty was declined. Same crew. I talked to Chuck Camusa before the game, and he told me, I hope we don't have a replay of that last week. So far, we haven't. Just two flags here in the first quarter so far. And as we've said before, a defensive game, another one headed that way for these two teams. Back up to you guys. Skyline from the 43 on third and four. And McDaniel keeps getting his number called. And it's all a matter of where he put his knee down. Is it a first down or is it not? So it looks like he got a favorable placement. And Chuck Camusa will say, let's bring out the chains. Yeah, that game last week over in Mountain View between Jefferson and the Spartans. A lot of flags in that game. Chuck Camuso's crew worked that game. And it's good to see a well-played first quarter as we did here today. Very few penalties, just the one turnover by St. Francis. Just hard nose, run it right into the line football. And let's see about the spot here, George. Is it a first down or not? Let's take a look. They're going to pull that chain out. And we've got somebody standing in the way. So it is a first down. So a pickup of four right there for McDaniel. He keeps on rolling along for Skyline. Yeah, we've seen Joe Cannon. We've seen McDaniel. We've seen a variety of running backs come in there for Skyline. They're moving the ball very well. And if this running attack for the Titans can keep it going, the Lancer defense is going to get weary. They're going to get tired. It's a ball control type of situation for the Titans. And even though they haven't scored, they are controlling the ball. They are controlling the clock. They just got another first down. First and 10 from the 47 for Skyline. Bouchelon on a long count. Goes with McDaniel. And he's got a little room to run. Getting good blocking up front. And the Lancers stepping up from the secondary to make the tackle. Tim Cross and Mike Owen out of the defensive backfield on the stop. There have only been a couple of passes by the Skyline attack here. Bouchelon hasn't had to work too hard throwing the ball, just handing it off to those running backs and the running attack for Skyline. Controlling the line of scrimmage, the offensive line opening up those big holes for guys like McDaniel and Cannon. And now a second down and about five or so. That keeps the clock rolling, 10.45 and counting here in the first half. Nothing, nothing our score. Second and five, and guess who? McDaniel brought down by Lentz, short of the first down. So it was counted a lot on the first series, now McDaniel. So 
They're keeping it with one guy, but more importantly, keeping it in the backfield. Well, they're changing it up a little bit, as you said, George. The first series they went with Cannon. Now this series they're going with somebody else. And it just kind of throws that defense off guard a little bit. And now Skyline looks like they're a little confused. Bouchelon calling a timeout here. A little miscommunication, and John Beam is going to head out onto the field and talk to his offensive unit. So Bouchelon getting the signals mixed up. We talk about the rash of penalties that hit, that's hit Skyline, and Bouchelon probably thinking right there. He doesn't want to see a delay of game or a mix-up. But perhaps something that's kind of mixed up right now, the CCS rankings. The St. Francis Lancers, not in them for the first time I can remember, as Oak Grove sits on top, followed by Bellarmine Leland. James Logan, a newcomer this year, because the Mercury News is now including the Mission Valley League over in the East Bay. Yeah, that's a really good CCS group right there. Oak Grove, arguably the best team I've seen in the CCS this year. They just whomped on St. Francis a couple of weeks ago. Bellarmine, a team the Lancers open up West Catholic League play with. Logan, some say one of the top teams in the entire state of California. Live Oak coming off a win against number 10 Mitty last week, 33-7. Mike Mitchell's team absent from that top 10 list. And of course, Skyline playing Logan and losing eight to six a couple of weeks ago on that slick AstroTurf in Union City. Third and two right here. And Volusia along with dual tight ends. And there's our friend Joe Cannon. We hadn't heard from him in a while. And he burst through the second effort for a nice game. Yeah, it looked like he was initially stopped and then he picked up about three or four more yards. Good run by Cannon and another first down. That's such a luxury when you can get it into that second and intermediate and then third and short situation. You have so many options to go with you if you're the coach. And that time, John Dean just said, hey, we're going to keep running it at him. Picked up the first down. They're just moving the sticks. Now they're inside the Lancer 35-yard line. He took 230 pounds of Mike Gross with him for an 11-yard game. They go with him again. And he's wrestled down by, Rob, by Greg Smith, Robbie Meebach looking up. So that time the Lancers were ready for Kent. Good penetration by the St. Francis defense. And you now get the sense that the Lancers are starting to key on that run a little bit. And you wonder if Bouchelon might be called upon to put the ball up in the air. Uh, heavy substitution here by Skyline. So maybe John Beam thinking, we've got him on the ropes. Let's put it up in the air in a little bit and see what happens. They pick up one and face a second and nine with 9.15 to go in the half. Still nobody on the scoreboard yet. Skyline has done all their scoring this year in the second half. So this is not a new situation for them. Flags go flying. Bouchelon fires for the end zone, and it's caught by Lindbrick. But the touchdown may not stand as the flags came out. Looked like there was some movement on the Skyline line. Yeah, this is coming back. Illegal motion indicated against the Titans. Chuck Musa says, come on back, boys. We're going to do it over. That negates a touchdown. Nice touch on the throw by Bouchelon, but it did look like there was some movement. Now, this penalty differs from an illegal procedure in the sense that it looked like somebody went in motion incorrectly rather than a lineman moving. Yeah, you could see the receiver at the top of the screen started. In fact, I think it was the guy who caught the touchdown. He got a head start there, and uh, because of his uh, anxiety, his presumption, they've got to bring it back and take the touchdown off the scoreboard. So the officials working advantage, disadvantage right there. That sets the Titans five yards back. They face a second and 14. They keep it on the ground where they've been comfortable with McDaniel, and he's followed down by Darren Winters. Good play calling that pass. Even though the touchdown was negated, it opened things up for the Lancers defensively, and Skyline took advantage of that. And a nice touch by Bouchelon on the throw. Then they come right back, put it on the ground again. Look at what we have, George. Another third and one situation for the Skyline Titans. So a third and long right here from the 35. Tough spot for Skyline. Yeah, I misread the yard marker. You're right. It is third and 11. I'm looking at the first yard marker. But either way, it could be two down territory. 8.25 to go, second period. Bouchelon firing out to the right side. He has an open cannon. The fullback dragged down by Machado after a short game. So the skyline fullback and halfback, very versatile athletes in John Beam's plan. They're asked to catch, block, and run. Bouchelon comes over to the sideline. John Beam sending his punt team in here, it looks like. Well, George, you thought it might be two down territory, but it looks like the Titans are going to try and keep the field position advantage and 
Now they've got a guy running off the field late. They had too many guys on the field. So Dwayne Taylor adjusting his count in anticipation of that. He's the punter. Nobody's deep for the Lancers. And this is going to roll down and take a bounce in the Lancer advantage through the end zone. So that'll move it out to the 20. The Lancers will have seven minutes and 31 seconds of second quarter time to work with. And as you see on our scoreboard, nobody's taken the advantage here so far today. Well, it's been a defensive game, but Skyline, you can see they're starting to get it going offensively again. They're wearing down that Lancer defense. And St. Francis really needs a long drive here. They don't necessarily need to score. They just need to keep the defense off the field and try to get those guys a chance to recoup over on the sideline. First and 10 from the 20, Lentz throwing, and it's nearly picked off. We just saw Dwayne Taylor a second ago punt it. And so the Lancers will try it again from the 20. The Lancer offense trying to stay on the field to rest that defense. Often the best defense is an offense that can dominate in the time of possession department. 7.26 to go. Cross comes to the right side. Two men in the backfield. They give to Tharp. He doesn't get any blocking from Burley, but he spins out. A nice second effort. Charles might have some daylight. He's down the left side of the field. This is one of his better runs. He's out to midfield, and he's brought down as he crosses the 50 by Skyline linebacker Pierre Crosby. So Crosby put on an overdrive and caught Tharp, who had it in overdrive from the beginning. Well, Charles Tharp, that was all number 21 right there. Looked like he was stopped behind the line, and then all of a sudden he broke free. Well, spin move there, gets through the first wave of white shirts, makes a man miss, and then he's off to the outside. You get him in the open field there, and it's very tough to bring him down. Good job by Crosby to wrap him up. He gains 33 there. They give to his backfield mate Burley, and he's off to the races on, as well on first and 10. He hooks up with Roger Ratliff and Maurice Bostick. Picking up eight in the process, and will set up second and a short two. Well, we've seen the Titans run the football for much of this game. Now we're seeing the Lancers try to establish a running game. The big peel by Tharp. Now Burley went for nine. They're faced with a second and short. Both times they went to the left side of the Lancer line. That's where they put the tight end. They actually have two tight ends out right now. They go with Tharp. He tries to put up the afterburner on the left side. But he's instead brought down by Ratliff. Penalties on this play, George. So penalties on the far side of the field. Let's see what Chuck Camuso has to say. Face mask was the preliminary indication, and John Beam doesn't like it one bit. The Skyline coach, he's been up there for a number of years, and his team going to be backed up even further. Good drive here for the Lancers. You hate to see those, especially in this end of the field, because they're 15 yards and a free first down. Yeah, in high school, they don't differentiate. It's 15 or nothing. 15-yard mark off, and the Lancers approaching the red zone. So they are in the red zone. Actually, five yards outside of it. That moves the ball to 25, where it's first and 10. Cross comes out to the right. But they've had some success on the ground. But Luker's looking to the air. He looks down Manos' side, and Grant out of bounds at about the 15. Pushed out by Thompson. And you can see with this drive, George, the confidence of the Lancer offense, the confidence of Charles Tharp, the confidence of Jason Luker. Everybody's starting to pick it up a little bit on the Lancer side, and Mike Mitchell's team seeking a touchdown. They're looking to score first here, and if the Lancers could get the early points, get the first points of the game, that'll certainly help not only the defense, but the entire team. Gain of eight on that last play, second and two for St. Francis. They call Charles Tharp's number, and he runs into a lot of traffic before picking up the first down. Lancers wanting to do well here at Brother Fisher Field and Ron Calcano Stadium. The home folks haven't had a lot to cheer about here in the early going. This drive started back at the 20-yard line following that touchback, and Jason Luker bringing him up to the line. Their line Brian speaks of is the 12. They go with Burley. He spins after being hit once, and Dwayne Taylor gets credit for the tackle. That moves the ball down to the six-yard line, so that'll set up a second and four. 
Look like Nick Garcia leading a block there. The Lancers primarily doing it with the run. A couple of passes by Luker. Got that completion of Matos a little bit ago. But another running play, and now the Skyline defense on its heels. Let's see what the Lancers go with. Runner pass. 5-11 left in the half. They look at Burley. And the fullback might be close. It's a matter of ball placement. Ran right into the middle. Akdul Rahman in there. Also on that stop, Maurice Bostic. Should point out the Lancers can pick up a first down without scoring. They need to get right around the two or three yard line to get a first and goal. Nick Adams, the offensive coordinator, talking with head coach Mike Mitchell. Third and short situation. So third and less than a yard from the four. They go with Farb, and he's got the first down. And he stops short of the goal line. So the Lancers will get a fresh set as they look to go across the plane. Tremendous drive for the Lancers. This will be the 10th play of the drive. And I got to believe you go to Charles Tharp here. You're down at the one yard line. Tharp's been the money man on this drive. Had that big 33 yard run to open up the march downfield. He just carried for a first down. Skyline not looking too good defensively here. The Lancers marching on the door. First and goal to go on the outside of the one yard line. Tharp is in the left side of the backfield. That's who gets the call. And did he get it across without putting his knees down? Let's see. Nope. He put his knees down before he got the ball across. So it'll be second and goal. They move the ball up a couple of feet, but not across. And Mike Mitchell a bit frustrated. Well, you got three more chances here, and I do believe this is a situation where if you're faced with a fourth and goal, you go for it unless you get a penalty of some sort and get moved back outside the five-yard line. So Skyline burns a timeout. Yeah, yeah, Skyline calling timeout. They're on their heels defensively, and that's the second timeout used by the Titans. So Skyline wasting one on offense, and here they really need one on defense to regroup. The Skyline defense looking very snake bit here on the road tonight in this Lancer offensive series. That big Farb run really seemed to shake them out of their boots. Yeah, and sometimes a play like that can also shake up your own team. And it looked like the Lancers got a little confidence there when Tharp reeled off the 33-yarder. And now they've been able to just methodically get it down the field. And they're looking at a second and goal at the one-yard line. And St. Francis desperately needing a win. 0-3 coming in. Mike Mitchell looking for his first win as the Lancers head coach. Trying to take the lead here with just over four minutes to play in the half. 4-0-1 exactly left in the first half. Again, Tharp in the left side of the backfield. That's who gets the call. And this time, it's for sure. Touchdown, Lancers. The cannon makes it official. The Lancers on the board first with 3.58 to play. Nice drive for the St. Francis Lancers. An 11-play, 80-yard drive. And number 21, Charles Tharp the catalyst of that drive. Nothing fancy about this play. Burley throwing a lead block. And Charles Tharp just busting it right through the middle. Six to nothing, the Lancers score first. Now Brian Bell out of crosses hold. You gotta look at the, between the uprights angle. And that is through and good, and the Lancers lead seven nothing. But remember, Skyline has done all their scoring this year in the second half. In fact, 24 of their 31 points this year have been in the fourth period. So they lead the comeback kids from Oakland 7-0 with 3.58 to go in the first half. Encouraging, though, for the Lancers. They needed a lift of some sort, and they just got it from Charles Tharp. The St. Francis offensive line creating some holes. Dick Adams is pumped. Mike Mitchell is pumped. The whole Lancer team energized by that 80-yard scoring drive, 11 plays. A bulk of those plays were running plays, and most of those running plays involved Charles Starr. Including the big 33-yarder to move him from the 20 inside Skyline territory. And keep in mind, Skyline now only has one timeout to work with here in the first half. They've already used two. Almost four minutes left. In fact, two minutes shy of four minutes and 3.58. Let's see if Bell can work with the wind and put it into the end zone. And McDaniel takes it from the five, loses the handle, reclaims his hold, and then breaks free. He's got good speed. And when you've got speed, you can let go of it like that on the stop for the Lancers, Joe Moore. Sometimes on a misplay like that, the kickoff team 
can over cover a play. So the Lancers did a good job not to get all excited and go after the ball. They just wanted to focus on the guy carrying it. Good containment, good coverage on the part of the Lancers special teams. And the Skyline Titans starting out around the 20 yard line. In fact, on the 20 exactly. So you really can't differentiate this from a touchback. First and 10. Again, Newell and Cannon in the backfield. And Cannon, the fullback, gets the call. And he runs right into James Lentz, one of the defensive ends. One thing that St. Francis scoring first does, it doesn't necessarily force Skyline to change up its game plan, but it certainly has to make John Beam think about what to do. Uh, right now, the running game has been very successful for the Titans, but if you start to fall behind 7-0, 14-0, 21-0, all of a sudden you've got to abandon that running attack. Skyline, not at that point. And John Beam hoping his team doesn't have to confront that bridge. Second and six from the 24 with 3.15 remaining in the half. Remember, Skyline with only one timeout. Bouchelon throwing to Cannon. He evades Burley before being taken down by Pavlovich. But still short of the first down marker. Customary with Skyline quarterbacks. We've seen it from Billy Cockrum, Cahill Jones last year. Bouchelon no different, coming over to the sideline, getting the play from Coach Beam and running it back to the huddle. So a pickup of three right there and a third and three from the 27 coming up. Lancers trying to counter with some knowledge from their own sideline as well. Darrell Maxwell comes wide to the left. We see him for the first time tonight. Lancers keep things close up front. Bouchelon looking down the field, looking at Maxwell's direction, and it was nearly picked off by Mike Owen. Looked like a corner blitz. James Lentz was coming. Good coverage downfield by the Lancers. Mike Owen had the receiver blanketed, and it's three plays and out for the Titans. Lancers with a chance to get the ball, and the always dangerous Tharp deep to receive. Another factor to remember here, Skyline with it on the 27, and the Lancers marching with the wind when they get it. Ryan Bell had a career best 46 yard field goal last week. But that's all premature because we got to talk about the upcoming punt by Dwayne Taylor. And it's a line drive towards Tharp. He takes it on the run from his own 44. And he doesn't, he gets up after being stopped initially. And I'll tell you, Charles is like that Energizer bunny. Charles Tharp's out here to prove something tonight. He ran into Brian Schmuck on that return, but he got away from the skyline man and picked up a few more yards. He gets a running start on that line drive kick. He runs into Schmuck, bounces away from a couple of Titans, stays on his feet, picks up about five or six extra yards after he was initially hit. Good return by Charles Tharp and the Lancers set up in the Titans end of the field. 18 yards worth of good return. First and 10 St. Francis from the 38 with 2.09 to play. And Luker is throwing, looking down the right side. And it's picked off for the Titans. This is Thompson. He's got the sideline to work with. Make that Taylor. And so, so much for the Lancer offense with a chance to extend the lead before the half. Luker looked to the right side the whole way. It's almost as if he threw it right at the skyline player. Little miscommunication offensively, the timing off, and Luker just telegraphing that pass. That's the second Lancer turnover of the game. So first and 10 for Skyline. Ball just outside the Lancer 45. The Titans with good field position at 159 to play in the second period. Bouchelon trying to pass, trying to avoid Luker's face. Finds the tight end, Meller. And Meller holds on, but short of the first down. So that'll set up a second and short. Clock running here. Skyline with one timeout to work with as Luker talks to Dick Adams over on the far side. Clock down, a 131. Skyline brings Fernandez to the left side. And they give it to McDaniel. And the second blast gets him the first down. Now John Bean asks for the timeout. So they only have one left. Well, now they have none left. They're calling a timeout here. This is their final timeout of the half. So remember, the clock stops on a first down in high school long enough to move the chains. But John Bean probably right now walking out, talking to his troops, thinking about which, how many passes they're going to try for when the end zone. 
And Mike Mitchell talking with Robbie Meebach trying to figure out how the Lancer offense is going to counter with Skyline throws in. And we send it downstairs to Andre. For everybody who's trying to figure out what was wrong with the Lancers, why they were 0-3, apparently the biggest cog in that is the passing game. The Lancers have had two balls thrown tonight, one intercepted, one that should have been intercepted, and both of them could have gone just as easily for touchdowns. Fortunately for the Lancers so far, their defense has really, really played well, and it's played well in a couple of the other games, but still they're 0-3. The passing game's been the thorn in the side. Hopefully they'll get it going in the second half, but they still lead 7-0. Back up to you guys. So thanks a lot, Andre. Andre Polizzi, our sideline man tonight. John Beam, Skyline sideline man. And Mike Mitchell, St. Francis' Skyline sideline man here against Skyline this evening. 116 on the clock. Skyline will go out of the eye. And they've passed a couple of times out of the eye tonight. And that's how Bouchelon is looking down the middle of the field. Again, Meller is a reliable target, wrapped up by Machado. But the clock keeps on running, 105 and counting. Skyline out of timeouts. They can't stop it unless they spike it. So Meller trying to get out of bounds, and Machado keeping him inbounds. That was an eight-yard gain. It's second and two from the 26. Bouchelon again looking downfield, and he throws short of Cannon. But the one thing that does is it stops the clock at 42 seconds. Yeah, that's not the worst thing that could have happened there. Cannon was open in the flat, the pass under thrown, but it does stop the clock. Not time to panic here, 42 seconds left, although Skyline does have a third down coming up here, so they've got to convert here or else either go for it on fourth down or maybe bring in Ramos to kick a field goal. Ramos has been warming up on the sideline. We don't know his range. He hasn't hit any field goals this year, but he will, would be kicking into the wind. They go with McDaniel, and McDaniel breaks three for the first down and has more as he runs inside of the 10 and is chased out by Cross at the seven. Anthony Limbrick threw a tremendous downfield block to get that extra yardage for McDaniel. And Skyline not having to hurry here because the man got out of bounds. Good presence as well by McDaniel, not only picking up the positive yardage, but knowing where the sideline was. That freezes the clock at 35 seconds, 19 yards on the play. And it's first and goal to go from the six. So a big chance for Skyline right here, trailing seven to nothing. The Lancers marching down the field, scoring on a Tharp run. And now Bouchelon trying to counter at the opposite end. He lofts it into the end zone. It's caught, and a flag comes out as Limbrick was there on the receiving end. This could be offensive pass interference. There was some pushing between Limbrick and the Lancer defender. We'll see if it's interference against the offense or the defense. Chuck Camuso will indicate momentarily. So it's a matter of who created the disadvantage for whom. And Camuso says touchdown. So it's decline, it's unsportsmanlike conduct against Skyline. That wasn't even interference. It's an unsportsmanlike against Skyline. And that's a big penalty. The touchdown does count. Watch the pushing and shoving going on in the fade route. Limbrook, kind of at the last second, pushed the defender and then he spiked the ball right in the Lancer defender's face. That's why the flag was thrown, and this is gonna wind up being about a 35-yard extra point attempt for Ramos. That's a big penalty. 35 right on the money and into the wind. Let's see how good Ramos' boot is. And he's got a pretty good one, it's good. So with 30 seconds left in the half, nothing but sevens on the board. That was a big penalty, and Ramos able to knock it home from 35 yards out on the extra point. And George, I guess that answers the question about Ramos's range. He, he left that one with plenty to spare. Good job by the Skyline Titans to take advantage of the Lancer turnover. And George, it's funny, we've seen a lot of Lancer football over the years. On that particular occasion, Skyline, the team, getting the touchdown right before the half. Usually it's St. Francis getting the points before halftime or the end of regulation. And after seeing Ramos with that kicking effort, you got to wonder if this game stays close. It could be Michael Ramos getting the call. It could be Brian Bell for the Lancers. And it yeah. could be set up by a turnover, especially in the short end of the field. Well, and that's what set up the skyline touchdown, the turnover by the Lancers. St. Francis with two turnovers. 
And again, you get to the middle of your season, penalties and turnovers, you've got to minimize those if you're going to have a chance to win. And as a coach, you hope from week to week that you are able to cut down on those mistakes and play error-free ball. The Lancers having some problems tonight, and Skyline just took advantage. Ramos kick off for the first time tonight. Lentz and Farp, the deep men for the Lancers. Lancers always on the watchful eye for the onside kick. But Ramos airs it out. Lentz will take it at the eight. Out over the 20. And he's dragged down, so the Lancers have a long march if they want to think about taking an advantage going into the locker room. So they'll set up shop on the 23, first and 10, with 23 seconds remaining. So a long way to go and a short time to get there when you talk about the end zone for St. Francis. Key here is no turnovers. You don't want a fumble, you don't want an interception, you don't want to give Skyline that extra opportunity to score again on you. Let's see what happens. So Luker keeps it on the ground and it is fumbled. Skyline gets it. And how about that? Pierre Crosby recovers the fumble. And a couple of plays there in Ramos' field goal range with 15 seconds left. Well, they're in his field goal range right about now. Just what I said you can do and the Lancers turn it over. Pierre Crosby right there, happy birthday, blow out the candles. Skyline with the ball, looking to take the lead right before halftime. They've got 15 seconds left, maybe one or two shots toward the end zone. And then if you don't get it, you might think about bringing Ramos on for a field goal. Remember, no timeouts for Skyline. First and 10 from the 24. With 15 seconds left, Bouchelon passing. And he finds an open... Limbrick and Limbrick breaks through, dragged down by Machado. The clock stops on the first down with six seconds left. Spike the ball and give your team a chance to get points. So right now it's a matter of placement. If it's on the 10, it's first and goal. If it's on the 11, it's first and 10. They spike it. It is first and 10. The ball just inside of the 10. So Skyline stops the clock, gets a chance to get a play in with three seconds left. John Beams proves the chance to take the lead in this 7-7 tie. Three turnovers by the Lancers in the first half. Skyline scored its first touchdown off the last turnover. Now they're trying to take the lead. And here's Ramos for the field goal. This will be a 26-yard attempt, and it's a bad snap. Ramos scrambles for it, and he falls down and his time expires. So the Lancers got to breathe a sigh of relief. Three turnovers in the half, but it's knotted up on the board. It's 7-7. Seven to seven. You're watching Prep Football on KMVT. It's halftime. Skyline 7, St. Francis 7. Earlier today, George Devine had an opportunity to talk to Skyline coach John Beam, and here's that conversation. I'm joined here with Skyline head coach John Beam. And John, your seventh trip down to Mountain View to play the Lancers. And always a very tough preseason slate for Skyline football. But it gets you well prepared for your OIL schedule. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we like playing the quality teams throughout the Bay Area. And it gives us our kids a chance to play on Friday nights. <laughs> Coming out of Oakland, obviously in the OAL, you have the four-team playoff structure within the section in Oakland, and you've been a longtime critic of a lot of policies, especially with the NCS, and you would, you've, would like to see the OAL eventually incorporated into a larger playoff system. Yeah, you know, you play a uh, 10-game schedule, and then you end up playing uh, in your league championship teams that you've already played. It'd be nice to expand ourselves and, and see what we could do with other teams and other leagues. Um, the other the big knock for me is that, you know, the North Coast playoff finals are in the Co Oakland Coliseum, yet we're in Oakland and we can't get in the Coliseum. That kind of, it hurts the kids. The kids would like to be able to play in the, the Oakland Coliseum. Yeah, I'm sure, John, with all your success in the inner city at Skyline, there have been offers to go to greener pastures, notably in the suburbs. What keeps you in Oakland? What keeps you at Skyline? Great kids, uh, um, good facility. Um, supportive administration and you know it, it you know it means a lot to be I don't know if the greener pastures is always true there's a, a lot of knocks about coaching inner city but uh, you know it's enjoyable the rewards are really intrinsic there 
So John Beam, the Skyline head coach, always a good guest on KMVT. Be back for the second half in a moment. Under the light of the full moon, Skyline and St. Francis settled nothing in the first half. George Devine along with Brian Burkett. Andre Polizzi joins us from the sideline. The focus of the first half was defense and turnovers. The Lancers turned the ball over twice. They almost turned it over three times. Here's an easy guess for you guys. Whichever team turns it over last will probably win this ball game. Should be a good defensive struggle. Let's go upstairs for the second half. So Ramos to handle the second half kickoff. Farp and Lentz are deep for the Lancers. So they start at even Steven. They begin the second half even Steven. They kick it in Farb's direction. Charles takes it at the 11 after a 49-yard effort. He stays on his feet over the 35. He's looking for some daylight, but he can't get any blocking as he comes out to midfield. Right before that kickoff, Mike Mitchell had his team huddled up over on the far side. He said, guys, we got to get it going here. We got a break toward the end of the first half. We should be losing. Tharp igniting things over on the far side with that huge return, starting things off for the Lancers' first drive of the third quarter. A 38-yard return pushes the ball out to the Lancer 49, 11-51, just underway second half. And Luker, trying to keep the electricity going, gives it to Tharp. Tharp wrapped up right away by Pierre Crosby. Crosby recovered one of those three Lancer fumbles in the first half. Well, the rushing of the Lancers, that's going to be the key here. Both teams ran the ball well in the first half. Turnovers, a major problem for St. Francis. Skyline converted on one of those giveaways, almost converted on another, but they had that bad snap on the field goal try right before the first half ended. So Tharp went nowhere on the first play of the second half. So it'll be second and 10, the ball just outside of midfield, 11-17 to play in the third period. And it's 7 to 7, a tied game between Skyline and St. Francis. Lancers again from the right hash. And Luker goes to Tharp out of the eye. The Lancers showing a new look. And Tharp with new life on the second blast. Brought down by Sterling Burroughs. Skyline stacking things up near the line of scrimmage, looking to contain Tharp. You get Tharp behind the line of scrimmage with a couple of guys in his face, you have a chance to bring him down. He gets into the open field. That's when trouble starts if you're the Lancers' opponent. It's a pickup of a short four. It'll be second and a long six from the 47. Remember, they started just outside of midfield after the big return by Tharp. Luker goes with Charles again. Charles stays on his feet, twists, turns. And he's close to the first down. Right now, it's a matter of ball placement. Did he get enough on his final lunge? Dwayne Taylor on the stop. Tharp with some spinning and looked like a whirling dervish. Got away from one guy, took a couple of people with him, and a good run, but he did not capture the first down. Facing fourth and in inches, the Lancers show a punt formation with Bell stepping back, going into deep safety is Antonio Thompson. Remember, Tharp is the middleman on this snap. They go with Bell, Tharp gives him a block, and Thompson backs up, and he took it out the one, but it'll be ruled a touchback as he fell back into the end zone. So Skyline will start out from the 20. Well, a good kick by Ball in the sense that he got a lot of distance on it, but it's only a 20-yard net on the punt, and Skyline to start out at the 20-yard line. Good field position considering that uh, the punter for the Lancers has a very good leg, and here comes Borchelon onto the field, and Damian hasn't had to throw the ball very much tonight. John Beam's team probably should have the lead in this one, but a couple of breaks. Lancers and Titans tied as Skyline goes on offense. So Skyline with the ball for the first time in the second half. 9.47 to play in period number three. 7-7 our score here at St. Francis. And they go with McDaniel. We called him a lot in the first half, and he stayed on his feet a lot in the first half. He follows suit here in the first play of the second half, brought down by Meebach. McDaniel getting some good blocking on the right side. Nice cutback move. The first drive of the game for the Titans. They ran the ball seven straight times. Let's see what happens. Their second half opening possession. Mike Mitchell trying to change things up defensively a little. Pick up a 14. It'll be first and 10 from the 34. And they give McDaniel the call again. Make it the, the fullback cannon. 
Well, they're mixing it up between their fullback and their halfback. Cannon goes straight ahead before running into Nick Burley. Talk about St. Francis looking for its first win. The Lancers came in 0-3, but Skyline, one win, one loss through two games. And you know both these schools, George, they play such a tough non-league schedule. It's no wonder that these clubs are really prepared very well going into their league schedules. Second and eight for Skyline, who's at De La Salle next week. It doesn't get any tougher than the Spartans in Concord. Bouchelon passing for Miller. And Josh was lost in traffic. James Lentz on the coverage. That'll bring up third down. Lentz got there right as the ball got to Miller. And good touch on the pass by the Titan quarterback. Just a little off the mark. And now Bouchelon coming over to the sideline. Customary. We've seen Titan quarterbacks do this quite a bit. Skyline taking on De La Salle, team in the state with the longest winning streak. I believe it's at 54 games now. That's ranked number one in the state, the top 10 in the nation by USA Today. And now timeout is called by the official on the field. There was an equipment problem, so Chuck Camuso wanted a player substituted for to get that equipment problem taken care of. Now we're ready to go. Drayson Trena getting some attention on the sideline by Julie Scharenberg. He was the man that went out for St. Francis. And they go with McDaniel. He stays on his feet for the first down and across midfield as he works into the Lancer Estate. Brought down at the end of the run by Machado. You start to see guys in the secondary making tackles. It's not a good sign for the Lancers. Good thrust off the right side of the line. Good blocking and McDaniel finding the holes. He doesn't need very much and much like Tharp, McDaniel a guy if he gets into the open field causes a lot of problems. You can say the same thing about Joe Cannon, the other tight running back. 16 yard game puts the ball a yard inside midfield with 8.13 to play in a tied game at 7-7. And Cannon initially nowhere to go but then he finds a little daylight for a short gain out to the 46 so he picks up three. Robbie Meebach there for the stop. So Meebach, after being out the first couple of weeks with an injury, now playing exclusively on defense. Trying to foil the Skyline Titan plans. So they gained four on that. It'll be second and six. The ball with its nose on the 45. Meller lined up on the left side. And he leads the blocking the opposite way. As Cannon started to look left, then went right. Good awareness by the fullback. Brings up a third down here. Skyline's already converted once on a third down on this drive. Got that big run from McDaniel to get it inside the Lancer end of the field. Haven't had a lot for the Lancer cheerleaders to cheer about this season, but so far a tie game tonight. Another big defensive stand coming up for St. Francis on this third down. So again, of two on that play, third and short from the 43. They need to make it just over the 40-yard line for the first down. Bouchelon takes his time and now loses the exchange. It looks like the Lancers have it. They do have it. And a big break for Mike Mitchell's troops. First skyline turnover, and that's a break that the Lancers needed in a way. St. Francis has been making mistakes. Now skyline commits a miscue and the Lancers all over that ball. Good job by the St. Francis defensive line. Now the offense comes onto the field. Nose guard Nick Garcia doing the job. It'll be first and 10 for the Lancers from their own 43. They give to Burley on the first play from scrimmage. He breaks through before he's brought down by Dwayne Taylor. Very important, George. The Lancers have to establish something, and above all else, hang on to the ball. Do not turn it over. Right now, turnovers keeping the Lancers from really establishing some momentum offensively. They had a good drive earlier in the game, scored the first points of the game, but in the second quarter, St. Francis really struggled turning the ball over, letting Skyline back in. 6-11 to play in this 7-7 ball game here in the third period and on second and seven. They go with Tharp and Charles runs into a ton of trouble. And he's hoping for good forward progress right here. So Charles not finding any blocking. 
And one of the concerns of Mike Mitchell was a young offensive line tonight. Yeah, and it's a line that's been uh, <coughs> hampered with some injuries. mebach has been out of there. And really, you're only as good as a running back as your offensive line to create those blocks for you. And even though we've seen Tharp rip off a couple of big runs tonight, most of those runs have been because Tharp's been able to get the openings and cut around the end. On third and 13, Lenz firing to an open Tim Cross. But Cross couldn't hold on. And so the Lancers will be forced to punt. Well, Luker showing some good poise here as he looked for Cross on the near side. Luker hanging in there to take the shot. Little bobble at the end there, and the ball got away from Cross. Good call, and the Lancers are three and out. So Thompson will go into deep safety as Bell shows punt. And Thompson calls for the fair catch and takes it at his own 23-yard line. And that's where the Titans will open for business with 5.13 to go in the third period in the 7-7 score. Talked about Skyline playing De La Salle of Concord next week. The Lancers home again next week to take on Cardinal Newman. It's funny, before De La Salle established this new winning streak in the state of California, the school that had the longest winning streak prior to the Spartans, Mark? Cardinal, Cardinal Newman. Newman. Back in the mid-70s, they had some great teams up there in Santa Rosa. The Ed Cardinals also dominating in baseball and basketball in the North Bay League. Yeah, Ed Monahan, the head coach up there for the Falcons, doing a good job, good club, and they made the playoffs up there in the North Coast section of their division. So Bouchelon on first and ten, trying to see if Skyline can get in the end zone again, and he gives to his fullback Cannon, and Mike Gross read it all the way from the beginning. Jason Trainer giving him a hand. And the first time tonight, Skyline's really been duped in their own backfield. Gross with a nice thrust, getting the penetration on that defensive front, and actually push Skyline back a yard on that play. The defensive line for St. Francis, for the most part in this game, has been handled by the offensive line of Skyline. Mike Mitchell hoping that changes here. So second and 11 coming up, 439 to play in the third period. And now the whistles blow and flags fly. Noah Meller moved early, the tight end on the left side, 87. He jumped the gun. That's going to cost the Titans five yards. So John Beam said to us before the ball game he wanted to cut back on penalties. They've cut back from last week's pace when they were flagged 11 times for 95 yards, but still not an encouraging sight. Sometimes, George, it's not necessarily the penalties that you commit or how many you commit, but rather when you commit them. If you commit a penalty when it's second and one, you jump offside. Now you've just turned a second and short into a second and six and drives coaches nuts. This will be a second and 16. The ball on the 17-yard line of Skyline. And the Lancers showing nickel, seeing if Skyline's going to pass. Instead, they keep it on the ground with McDaniel. The Lancers late to react, but then they recover. So Machado out of his safety position with another tackle, calling his name a lot tonight. Yeah, Vince Machado, this is a kid that has really emerged. A couple of weeks ago against Oak Grove, he had some defensive lapses, but uh, this is a guy that Mike Mitchell is very proud of, very high on coming out of that secondary. He's a guy that is gonna have to come up and be that second or third guy involved in tackles on running plays, and he's also a guy who's gonna have to cover those receivers, especially guys coming out of the backfield. They got three back on that play. They face third and a Baker's dozen with 3.31 to play. Bouchelon out of a long count looks down the left side. And it's knocked down by Trana as he mixed it up with McDaniel. Well, Trana, he covered McDaniel solidly there. McDaniel hobbling a little bit as he runs off. Skyline just unable to get it going offensively in that sequence, set back by a one-yard loss on first down and then the penalty. They were looking towards Anthony Limbrick's direction on that play. He came out wide to the left side. And now Dwayne Taylor shows a punt formation and Tharp standing in his own territory out of your picture awaits him. Tharp takes it inside of midfield, muffs it initially and then hangs on. And the Lancer is grateful that Charles has good hands right now. Well, Tharp, again, it was a line drive kick. 
and he tried to run up and catch it, and as he was running up, the ball bounced right off his chest. Fortunately for the Lancers, Tharp was able to regain possession, but a few Lancer fans, coaches, and players had their hearts palpitate on that play. So get out your blood pressure cuff with 3.20 to play, first and 10 from the 38. The Lancers hope to march into the end zone and take a lead in this 7-7 game. And they give to Charles Tharp. He's been getting roughed up all night, but not before picking up a few more yards, brought down by Anthony Limbrick. You know, one thing that that last Skyline possession did was it backed Skyline up, which shifted the field position advantage over to the Lancers. Tharp with a decent return after he recovered the ball, and the Lancers starting at the Skyline 38. Now they move it inside the 35, and St. Francis in very good shape here. Second and five from the 33 with 2.44 to play in the third period. And they give to Tharp with Burley leading to the right, but he cuts left. And he runs for a Lancer first down. That was a slow developing play, a little bit of a delay on the handoff from Luker to Tharp. And that delay, in a way, caught Skyline off a little bit defensively, created a hole over on the right side. Looked like it was John Powell throwing a block, 6'1", 230 pounds senior over on the right side. Tharp sprung for big yardage. So a 10 yard game moves the ball to 23 with 218 to play in the period. Tharp off left tackle. And a flag comes out as he was being pursued by Burroughs. Yeah, uh, say, say. And when you see a flag like that, Brian, you gotta think holding or clipping. Say, say. Yeah, we're gonna have to wait and see. Skyline thinks it's against the Lancers and it is holding against St. Francis. <laughs> Looked like the same play just to the other side and the Lancers caught with their hands in the cookie jar. So the Lancers not penalized as much as Skyline is tonight and John Beam right now thankful that the Lancers will be marched back a bit. They're in the short end of the field. Trying to take a lead in this 7-7 ball game. 2-10 left to play in the third period. The Lancers trying to break an 0-3 streak. Skyline trying to go ahead in the win column. They're 1-1 one one coming in. That guy, Mike Mitchell, looking for his first win as the St. Francis head coach filling the legendary shoes of Ron Calcagno. And that first win, easier said than done, isn't it? And it took Ron Calcagno five tries to get his. So the Lancers surrender five. It'll be first and 15. They call Burley's number. And he's brought down by Taylor. Lancers, when they started off 0-3 in 1993, they got their first win against Skyline here in a 6-0 shutout. Another defensive struggle today. Teams taking advantage of opportunities in some cases, squandering chances in others tonight. This is a second and 11 from the 24. Tharp off left guard. Runs into trouble as he meets Sterling Burroughs head on. Burroughs really stepping up in the second half for Skyline. Lancers controlling the ball here, but now they're faced with a third down and eight. And the Lancers really kind of in a, a tough spot. Skyline could be looking past Tharp, a workhorse, and you can see Charles starting to hobble a bit. Charles will be in the back of the eye, clock inside of a minute at 52 seconds. Oh, and Charles hobbling but staying oh, on his feet. And he's brought down at the end of the run by David Robinson. So the Lancers will take advantage of being at this end of the field as the third quarter ticks down to 35 seconds remaining. And they'll give Bell a chance to kick a field goal. Yeah, Brian's in very good shape. A little bit of an angle as he spots it over on the right side. Looking at about a 33 yard field goal attempt. And now St. Francis calling timeout. So St. Francis will call time and set things up. Remember Bell last week on the road in Hollister hit a career high 46 yarder. And Mike Mitchell, you talked to him about his junior kicker. And he expects every time on a kickoff a touchback. And he said, you know, I talked to him earlier this season. He said that. 
the high 40s, low 50s is not an unrealistic goal for this young man. I don't know where St. Francis gets these kickers from. Jeff DeBono, Dominic Pucci, Britt Siester, Luke Adriani. This kid here, I mean, John Beam, he's just happy to have Michael Ramos for crying out loud. There were times last year where Skyline, they didn't even try to kick extra points and field goals. Anytime they scored a touchdown, they automatically went for two. John Beam has a problem at Skyline. The Oakland section plays soccer in the fall. The CCS plays it in the winter. Luca Adriani, who you mentioned, also a pretty good soccer player. This will be a 33-yard try from the right hash out of Cross's hold. And it's knocked down by the middle of the Skyline line. Roger Ratliff, number 42, had a hand up on it. And so Skyline will get it back at the 20-yard line. 14 seconds to play here in the third period. Both teams have missed field goal opportunities. Skyline had the bad snap on the final play of the first half. 33-yard attempt for St. Francis goes awry, partially blocked by the Titans. Skyline getting it at the 20-yard line. Looks like we'll be tied going into the fourth quarter, George. So 14 seconds left, time enough for one play. Bouchelon calls the play out of the eye. And a quick look down the field. The man open was Kenneth Logwood. Getting his number call for the first time tonight, Mike Owen covering. Well, Skyline hasn't thrown the ball very much. That's why Logwood hasn't been mentioned very much. He's a receiver, 5'8", 165-pound senior, and that time Bouchelon went in his direction, but the pass a little tall. Good coverage by Owen. One of the rare times that Skyline has thrown on first down. So with the incomplete pass, only five seconds elapsed. Nine seconds left to play here in the third period in the 7-7 ball game. It's a typical classic between St. Francis and Skyline this evening. And they go with McDaniel, and Gross runs right into him. And the clock will run out on the third period. So these two teams haven't settled anything after playing three periods of football. And I'll tell you, Brian, we mentioned this a moment ago. Skyline this year, 24 of their 31 points have been scored in the fourth period, all of their scoring this year in the second half. Until tonight when they got the seven points in the first half, their first first half points of the season to tie things up at seven. And we are still tied at seven as we go into the fourth quarter of play. So I was thinking this morning when I noticed that, the cardiac kids and thought about the 1980 Cleveland Browns who pulled several games out of a second half bag. Ended up with home field advantage before losing, losing the eventual champion Raiders. And Brian Sipe on that club, Ozzie Newsom, who now works for the Baltimore Ravens as player personnel director. Baltimore Ravens, that just doesn't roll off the tongue like Cleveland Browns. And not like Baltimore Colts did either. So a pickup of one on that last play, and on the first play of the fourth quarter, will be a third and nine from the 21. And the Skyline took over at the 20 after the failed field goal attempt. And Bouchelon throwing to Fernandez, and he's tied up by Tanfran. I don't know who caught the ball. Was it Tanfran or the Skyline receiver? Did anybody catch it? Well, let's check the possession arrow and see what <laughs> happened. They're calling it incomplete, incomplete pass. Here's the look on replay. Both guys went up for it. It's a timing play. And apparently Tanfran got his hand in there to knock the ball away right at the last moment. Good effort by Fernandez to try and bring it down for Skyline, but an equally good job defensively by John Tanfran. So it'll be a fourth and nine. Skyline will have to punt. And remember, the Lancers will be looking at pretty good field position, and that guy's had some good returns tonight, Charles Clark. He's got to be careful. Got to hang on to the ball and make sure you tuck it away. The punt by Taylor. Tharp takes it his own 44. And he breaks free of one tackle and tries to find the far sideline. And I'll tell you, Charles got by almost every skyline defender on that return. 
I've already referred to it once tonight. I see Tharp running back these punts. He reminds me of Eric Lewis from a couple of years back. Kind of the spin moves, the swerving and dancing and darting along the side. I mean, look at this. Tharp makes sure he has it in his possession. And he makes a cut move, kind of swings away, stays on his feet. Takes about five guys to bring him down. The guy who got him down, the punter, Dwayne Taylor, after a 14-yard return, first and 10 Lancers, 11.39 to play. And guess who they go with? Charles Tharp. He stays on his feet. He's looking for daylight to the far sideline. A flag comes out, and he'll be knocked down short of the goal line, pending the flag. The Lancer fans are celebrating, but I think it's coming back. So one official said he was in the end zone, another said he was stopped short, but more importantly, another one threw a flag. Yeah, and the guy who threw the flag is saying, hold the phone, folks. Mike Mitchell had to be pleased with that run by Tharp, but all for naught. Usually it's in the vicinity where you have an illegal block or a clip. Paul working against the Lancers, negate the big run for Tharp. So that turns out to be a one yard gain rather than a touchdown run or a placement on the one yard line for a first and goal to go. So it'll be first and nine. A rather odd number from the 41 yard line. And they go with Tharp again. This time Charles doesn't find as much daylight. Carries it to the 35. Brought down by Abdul Rockman, the front of that line. Charles Tharp getting a bulk of the work today, and as we move into the fourth quarter, look for Mike Mitchell to keep giving it to 21. Had the big run on first down, which came back on the penalty. Had some positive yardage there, now second down and intermediate. So second and four coming up from the 36 and 10.53 to play. And they go to Charles, and he loses the handle. A flag comes out. Ryan Schmuck. Trying to give him a block right there as Tharp lost the ball, but then he recovered. This is a penalty that will probably be declined by Skyline, holding against St. Francis the call. Again, the Lancers having trouble hanging on to the football. It's not raining. It's not snowing. It's a perfect night. Looked like it was Ernest Newell. We talked about him at the top of the telecast. He got either a helmet or a hand in there to dislodge the ball from Burley. The penalty is declined. The play lost yardage, and more importantly, a wasted down for the Lancers. So it'll be third and 10. They need to reach their, the Skyline 32 to get a fresh set of downs. Ernest Newell, fellow John Beam, likes a lot. Liked them a lot last year. He batted down a couple of passes thrown by John Gall and route for the win. And they go with Burley. He goes nowhere. So Burley hoping his airbag deployed on that run. Man, he took a shot right at the point of attack, too. Burley got the ball, took one step, and it was lights out. And the drive bogs down. Punting situation for the Lancers. A loss of two on that play, so mark this off from the 43 for Bell. And stepping back and deep safety is Lindbrook. Good coverage by Trena. And he'll chase Lindbrook and knocks him down right after he catches it. Jason Trena really showed good speed on that 34-yard punt for Bell. And when you consider the speed that Skyline has, any time you can keep him from a return of any length, it's an accomplishment. Well, one thing that the St. Francis punt team is very good at is coverage, and when you do not outkick your coverage, that's what happens. You get your special teams players down there right as the ball is arriving. Good kick, good coverage, skyline pinned deep. Combination of hang time and speed and execution by Trainer. First and 10 from the nine, 9.37 to play in the ball game. They give to McDaniel. And he runs right in, Trena on the tackle with help from Lentz. St. Francis looking for a stop here on this possession so they can get the ball back, maybe even force Skyline to punt 
from this end of the field, get the ball around midfield or inside Titan territory. Skyline, other side of the coin, looking to get out from the shadow of their own goalposts. So second and seven coming up from the 12. San Fran mirrors Fernandez the bottom of your screen. Fernandez open in the middle of the field. And that's where Bouchelon looks as Tan Fran wraps him up after he picks up necessary first down yardage. That'll get you out of the shadow of your own goalpost. Timing play, a quick hitter across the middle. That's a play they went to earlier, but Tan Fran disrupted things. No such luck for the Lancers that time. Bouchelon with the strike right across to Fernandez, and they get it out near the 28 yard line. So a pickup of 16 right there. And it'll be first and 10 for Skyline. They're hoping to march into the end zone and break the 7-7 tie with 8.36 to play. Bouchelon goes with Cannon out of the front of the eye. And Cannon looking like he was not shot out of one. Didn't pick up much. He was brought down by James Lentz. You just get the sense that Skyline seems to come up with the big plays when they have to and Skyline, you just get the sense that Skyline is going to find a way somehow to get downfield, put the points on the board, and take the lead. The Lancers needing some breaks. They've gotten one turnover here in the half from Skyline, but defensively, a few holes on the Lancers' side of the ball. However, St. Francis defensively playing much better this week than in the previous three. A pickup of two, and it's second and five. Bouchelon rolling out. As nothing opened up downfield, Train and Lentz looking up for the stop. I'll tell you what, Jason Traina, he seems to be everywhere. So is James Lentz. Bouchelon, who was just chased by a couple of those guys. And that's what happens when you're chased by a couple of guys. The mouthpiece is hanging out, and you kind of look like you've been harassed. And good job by Traina on that play. Good containment by the Lancers to cut away the running possibilities for the Skyline quarterback. So a loss of one, the Titans face a third and seven. The ball on the 31 yard line. They need to make it out to the 38 to get a fresh set of downs. 7.04 to play in the ball game. Bouchelon looking pass. He tries for Fernandez who has to come back to the ball. And right now the $64,000 question is where are they gonna spot it? Well the tip drill here. And a good catch by Fernandez. Big spot, big measurement coming up. Fernandez caught it right at the stick. They bring out the chains. So let's take a look at the measurement. Chuck Camuso in the white hat. Veteran official called last year's CCS championship game. And there's still some chain to cover for Skyline. Fourth and inches coming up. Missed it by that much. So this is not only a game of yards, but sometimes inches. We're about to find out if Skyline can pick them up. With 6.46 to go, 7-7 game. And the Lancers looking for a big defensive stop. How about this call? Skyline going for it from their end of the field. A lot of faith in that Skyline backfield. Cannon right behind Bouchelon, and that's who they give to, and he gets it. So Cannon doing exactly what you want a fullback to do. That's a statement first down. Fourth and inches, your own end of the field, and you just run it right up the middle. We'll take it downstairs to on. Well, he'll keep it up here for now as Skyline looks at a first and 10. They're at the 41-yard line with 6.15 to play. 7-7 seven, seven our score. George Devine and Brian Burkett with you. Andre Polizzi is downstairs. And Bouchelon looking downfield and airing it out. And he was looking for Logwood. And Kenneth nowhere to be found. Mike Owen down to cover. Well, Owen's been drawing the assignment of covering Logwood tonight. Bouchelon hasn't thrown deep very often. That time they had just picked up the big first down on fourth and inches. John Beam saying, hey, let's air it out. Let's go deep. And the deep ball just beyond the reach of Logwood. And 
this is a, another moment in the game where you know, St. Francis defensively getting tested. They were tested on that opening drive. They stopped Skyline on a fourth down play. They were unable to make the stop on fourth down here, but they've still got the Titans in their end of the field. Lancers back off the ball a little bit and give the Skyline backfield some room to work as they give to McDaniel, and he finds some room to run before being dragged down by Robbie Mebach. Sometimes you back up a little bit in order to improve your vision and get a better read. So they took a little bit of a step back and apparently it didn't work out too well because that play almost went for a first down. Two yards short, however, the ball is just outside of midfield. Clock winding its way down to five and a half minutes. 7-7, seven, seven. both teams getting on the board in the first half. But Skyline has been the fourth quarter club so far in two games played this year. Trying to make it three here tonight in Mountain View. And they go with Cannon. And he got the first down. Looking at the official on the near side, Burley on the stop. Skyline just wearing down the Lancers defensively. St. Francis getting eaten up at the line of scrimmage. The Skyline interior five creating the holes for McDaniel, creating the holes for Cannon, giving Bouchelon time to throw. And again, you just get the sense that Skyline's going to march right down the field here and get some points. And every time they've needed a big play in short yardage, they've gone to Terrell Butler's size at right tackle, 6'2 and 305 pounds. McDaniel goes the opposite way this time. Nice block knocks Lentz out of the play. And that buys McDaniel a little escape space. They've run nine plays on this drive, George. Only two have been passing plays. The rest have been rushes. And look at this, McDaniel gimpy, and he wants somebody to sub him. So another teammate asking for a timeout. That's Bouchelon. So Skyline will burn their first timeout of the second half. Remember when they got down at the end of the first half, they wasted the timeout on offense, used another on defense, and they were left with only one in the final march down the field. And that's something that the head coach probably spoke about in the locker room. Preserving those timeouts, you're in a dogfight with a very good team out of the Central Coast section. St. Francis, despite being winless, is still a very good club, and Skyline knows that better than anybody. They didn't get their first win against the Lancers until last year, looking to make it two years in a row. Both clubs now with two timeouts remaining. Take a look at the St. Francis schedule and what they've done so far. The three losses, Live Oak, Oak Grove, and Hollis are tied with Skyline tonight. Another club who made the playoffs last year, in fact, won their section in the North Coast Redwood Empire, Cardinal Newman. And then the league begins, starting with Bellarmine, ending with Reardon. But if you look at that Lancer schedule, eight of those clubs made the playoffs last year, all five of their non-league opponents. If you call those elective opponents, made the sectional playoffs last year. Yeah, big time strength of schedule and the Lancers really having to kind of knuckle down and they look at McDaniel looking at his right ankle it appears, but certainly a tough schedule for St. Francis as they get ready for league play. So after a six yard gain, it's second and four from the 40. They go with Cannon as McDaniel is on the bench and the fullback finds some room to run on the far side before being taken down by Lentz. So that'll stop the clock at 4.13 as they reset the chain. Skyline continues their march down the field. And remember, this is a march that started at Skyline's nine yard line. Cannon firing off the left side. Lentz eventually wrapped him up. But good blocking, good running on the part of the Skyline Titans and St. Francis going the wrong direction. The defense on its heels. So a 16 yard pickup, the ball at the 24 with 4.13 to play. Bouchelin shouts out instructions. Skyline works from the eye. McDaniel still on the bench, being spelled right now by Lamar Johnson. And Bouchelin looks to Miller and he can't hold on, Machado covering. That's a good cover by Machado, wrapping up Meller. Meller juggled the ball a little bit. Machado may have gotten a hand in there to knock the ball away, but that's good defense. He gave Meller a little bit of a cushion. Good pass by Bouchelon off Meller's fingertips. It's a ball that should have been caught, but again, the defense of Machado breaking things up and forcing a second and 10. 
That's what the situation looks like. 7-7 the score, 4-0-6. The ball on the Lancer, 24. Skyline on second and 10. Trying to break the tie. They go with Cannon. He's found some success on the left side tonight, finds a little more. He stays in bounds, so the clock will keep on ticking. Down to 355. They can keep on counting at home. Skyline has had the ball nearly six minutes on this drive. It started back at the nine yard line. This will be the 13th play of the drive. And Skyline facing a third down situation. Pivotal moment in the game as Skyline looks to keep the drive alive. St. Francis looking for a stop, hoping to keep Skyline out of the end zone or off the board with a field goal. Five yards they need for a first down from the 19th. One man in the backfield, it's Cannon Bushel on passing. This time complete to Limbrick, and he's got the first down. Machado drags him out inside the 10. This has been an impressive drive. Great call on third down. Limbrick scrolling across. Bouchelon getting a lot of time, able to set up. Limbrick had the corner, took Machado for a ride. First down skyline, it's first and goal. Well, the Lancer defense showing their fatigue. The skyline offense showing their skill on this drive. 3-11 to play in the ball game. 7-7 our score. So Bouchelon will set things up inside of the 10. He goes with Cannon. Cannon looking for a block. And stopped short of the goal line by Todd Pavlovich. Pavlovich, the brother of Nick Pavlovich, who was the quarterback here a couple of years ago for St. Francis, may have saved a touchdown. What a drive by Skyline. Started at the nine. This is the 15th play of the drive coming up. They've taken nearly seven minutes off the clock. And so second down and goal to go from the four. A little mix up on the skyline line. They straighten it out. And Bouchelon looks at Cannon. And did he get in? No, he stopped short. Right inside the one yard line. That's about as close as you can get to the end zone without scoring. And we'll see the 16th play of this drive coming up. Third and goal and a stoppage here in officials timeout. James Lentz goes off for the Lancers. Now the Lancer medical crew out to have a look at Nick Burley. John Beam asking why there's a stoppage. Brian, Brian Schmuck comes in. Yeah, Brian Schmuck is going to come in and replace Burley. That's how far the Titans need to go to get the touchdown. So close, but it could be so far away. Third and goal to go on the one foot line. Bouchelon keeps it. And he's through for the score. The officials took their time to make sure they got it right. Wow. George, we've seen a lot of Lancer football over the years. I can't recall a time in recent history where the Lancer defense has been pushed all over the field the way they were on that drive by Skyline. A 91-yard scoring drive for the Titans, and that may have just salted the game. There is an injured Titan in the end zone. Just under two minutes left, Skyline has taken the lead. And that Skyline player who's down is being attended for. He has a cramp, it looks like, and you expect the Lancers to be cramping up after trying to hold on for 16 plays. So Skyline takes the advantage 13 to 7 with 157 left to play in the ball game. But this game's still far from over. Right now, the big question after you see the injured man getting up, that's Asani Davenport, a 5'11", 260-pound senior tackle. So let's see if they go one or two. They're looking for two. They bring Ramos onto the field to try the extra point. We'll take a look at the uprights. Out of Bouchelon's hole. And it's wide right. 
So the Lancers look at a six point deficit following the kickoff. That's something else you got to think about. Skyline may want to keep it out of Lancer hands on this upcoming kickoff. Are you suggesting an onside kick? No, I didn't exactly say that. But I, I would be, I'd be shocked if we had an onside kick here. I would think Skyline's got to kick it deep, pin the Lancers back, cover the return. The thing here, though, for St. Francis, with that missed extra point by Skyline, St. Francis could take the lead by kicking an extra point on a touchdown of their own. But another factor, St. Francis needs a touchdown. A field goal does them no good. Minute 57 left in regulation. The Lancers have two timeouts remaining. Skyline doing a good job marching 91 yards, 16 plays, seven minutes and 40 seconds on that scoring drive. They took nearly eight minutes off the clock. And folks, when you consider that high school football quarters are only 12 minutes long, and you have the ball for eight of those minutes, I'd say that you have a pretty good chance of at least controlling the ball, and if you can score, that really hurts your opponent. And that eight minutes is not an eight of 12 minutes right now. It's more like an eight of 10 minutes, because right. there's still 157 left to play. That makes the gravity of that time difference even more astonishing. The Lancers are gonna play with a cover unit up front. Keep two men back. Farb is their deepest man, along with Mike Chauvel, a sophomore. And Schmuck falls down on it at his own 37. That's where the Lancers will set up shop. Two timeouts and a minute and 54 to go. So they need to march down 63 yards for the score. Not a good kick by Ramos. Schmuck falling on the ball, making sure he had possession. That's another thing the Lancers have to worry about here. St. Francis has had trouble holding on to the ball, but again, two timeouts. You've got a minute 53 to play with here, and St. Francis starting off in pretty good shape at their own 37. So 13 to seven the score, the Lancers down, but not out with the ball with 153 to play. Luker passing, and a quick look out of bounds as he overthrew. Grant Mattos. That's one thing that St. Francis is now forced to do. Earlier in the game, the Lancers had a chance to take the running attack of Skyline out of the picture if they could build on a 7-0 lead. Well, Skyline came back with two touchdowns. Now the Lancers are forced to throw the ball and sort of abandoning the running game a little bit. So second and 10 for an offense that spent nearly eight minutes on the bench. And Luker looking to the right side, and there's Cross. And he can't hold on. You know what I was thinking about right there, Brian? Tim Cross has got a good arm. I was looking downfield to see if he was looking downfield as well. Yeah, I'll tell you what, at this point, judging by those last two throws by Luker, you might want to go to Cross for a halfback option, some sort of razzle-dazzle here. It's third and 10. St. Francis certainly in two-down territory. So Tim Cross goes to the top of your screen. He'll be shadowed by Anthony Limbrick, who gives him a little room to work with. They hand off to Tharp underneath. Charles trying to stay on his feet, and he's close to the first down as he's wrestled down by Sterling Burroughs towards the far sideline. The clock will stop with 134. He got the first down. It's tough to tell over on the far side if he got out of bounds or not. The officials stopped the clock. Well, now it's not even obvious whether he got the first down or not. Chuck Camuso has stopped the clock. Looks like they'll have to bring the chains all the way across the field. So apparently the clock was halted because Tharp got out of bounds. Tharp right now with the Lancer medical staff, Julie Scharenberg having a word with him. And a long walk coming up right here for the chain crew. So Mike Mitchell, done a lot of pacing, has worn out a lot of Bermuda grass on the far sideline tonight. And they're short by a foot. Fourth and inches, gotta go for it. And we'll see about Tharp. Last we saw Tharp, he was on the side with trainer Julie Scharenberg. And now he's coming back. I don't think he's gonna leave anything on this field tonight. Well, he hasn't up to this point. Charles Tharp, who was the hero of the CCS championship game against Bellarmine last year. Big moment here, fourth and inches. 
Skyline burns a timeout as John Beam will probably talk to his lineman. This is a situation, do you use a goal line package or do you look for something on the outside? It's a tough spot to be a defensive coordinator and Andre Polizzi might have an angle on that. A lot of the Skyline players here on the sideline thinking that extra point might be very crucial, very upset when Ramos unfortunately missed it to the right. But the real unfortunate thing is the St. Francis side. They got to resort to the passing game here in the final couple of minutes. They will have to run the ball here on an upcoming fourth down. They pulled a surprise play on third down, handing off to Tharp, and almost got 10 yards. But the St. Francis passing game just hadn't been there tonight, hadn't been there this year. And even if they get this first down, they still got to go 50 more, 50, 55 more yards and go for a touchdown by passing. Back upstairs to you guys for the big finish. So the Lancers will have to send in this comeback airmail, but first some ground package delivery to worry about. Skyline out of the timeout. The Lancer band playing all right now, but it's not all right now for either team. The Lancers face a fourth and short. Skyline faces the prospect of having to defend for four more downs. Andre crystallizing what we were talking about. St. Francis has been forced to throw, but it looks like we might see a running play here. Fourth and inches. So Tharp, the only man in the backfield, that's who they call. He stays on his feet for more than the inches and was just short of busting out for long yardage before being taken down by Roger Ratliff. Well, the blocking over on the left side of the line was tremendous, a little bit of a delay. The Skyline defense overcompensated and Tharp easily captured the first down. Now we'll see if the Lancers throw the football you got to think, with just over a minute to play, they're going to have to put it up in the air. 118, first and 10 from the 41. Luker looks downfield to Cross. Cross holds on. He picks up first down yardage. Pending the placement, Chuck Camuso again asks for time. And this time, the time is charged to the Lancers. They were short of the stick. So they're going to face a second and short situation with a minute three to play. Each team down a one timeout. Yeah, St. Francis able to conserve. And, you know, as Skyline's defense goes, you can give the middle of the field to those Lancer receivers. However, the Lancers do have the ability to stop the clock. They do now have one timeout remaining. They just called their second timeout of the half a moment ago. And Skyline's got to be careful. You can play the prevent all you want, but you've also got to keep putting pressure on the quarterback, getting the penetration, firing off those blocks down in the trenches. Luker getting a test here in the final minutes of this game, trying to lead St. Francis on the comeback. We talked about Skyline's comeback abilities, but right now the shoe on the other foot. That's right, the Lancers trying to see if they can beat John Beam's club. A minute three to play. Second and two from the 33. But the Lancers not really thinking about getting that two so much as they're thinking about getting on the board. A touchdown ties it, a conversion after the touchdown wins it. Luker gives to Tharp. Charles brought down by the ankle tackle. Ernest Newell. Ernest yeah. Newell saved the touchdown right there. He made the nice trip up. They get the first down, but. Uh, that could have easily gone for huge yardage, maybe even a touchdown. So Ernest Newell has been out of the picture much tonight. In it when Skyline needs it, Luker passing on first and 10. And the ball is dropped by Cross, who's usually a steady-handed receiver. So 47 seconds left, 13-7. The Lancers on the Skyline porch, but far from pulling their keys out of their pocket. Now Skyline out in front here, and that incomplete pass, not the worst thing that could have happened. Again, it stopped the clock. Chance for the Lancers to regroup a little bit. Second and 10. It also gives Skyline's defense a chance to catch its breath. They're on the 27-yard line of Skyline. Lancers bring two wide receivers to the left. Chauvel and Cross. They go with Tharp through the middle. And Charles brings it down to the 20. Make it the 25. Short yardage gained right there. It'll be third and eight. And now the Lancers take another timeout. So they're done in the timeout department with 33 seconds left. Well, they had to call a timeout, and now what has happened, it's got to be a pass. You run the ball here on third down. you got to make sure that running back gets out of bounds. With only 33 seconds left, 
St. Francis, no more timeouts to utilize. So Skyline really has to be thinking that Luker's gonna put it up and back to what Andre talked about on the sidelines. When you put the ball up in the air, it seems for St. Francis tonight, good things have not happened. Jason Luker is still emerging, still getting better at the quarterback position, but the routes have been very ordinary and uh, the arm strength has not exactly been there. The teams that have played St. Francis this year, they are looking to make the Lancers pass. Keon Tharp stopped the run, and that's exactly the situation that Skyline has. Make the Lancers throw the ball. It's third down. St. Francis with no more timeouts. you got to be looking past. John Beam highlighted that textbook Brian Burkett just quoted a lot and holding on to this 13-7 lead, but he's going to have to quote it a little more to hang on some more. So Luker again with Chauvel and Cross to his left. Matos to his right. He looks right, now goes short to Tharp. And remember, the first down is the first objective, but Tharp nowhere close. The Lancers unable to stop the clock at the end of that play. It's counting down inside of 20. And this is a fourth down play. This is fourth down here. Fourth and four from the 20. They need to make the 16, clock down to 10. Luker on the run, looking downfield. He has Matos open for the first down. So Matos catches it near the 10. The Lancers don't go anywhere yet. They're still alive with five seconds left to play. So Luker hustling his troops up to the line of scrimmage. Matos doing some limping. Now the officials calling time. Apparently Skyline had one more timeout left than we thought. Why would Skyline call a timeout here? It, I'll tell you, Brian, I'm just as puzzled as you are, perhaps even more. The way that St. Francis was running to the line, it looked like the receiver was marked short of getting out of bounds, which means that once the ball was placed and once the sticks were placed, the officials would have restarted the clock. John Beam, as the Lancers huddle, John Beam, the Skyline coach, is walking over to the officials trying to get an explanation. <laughs> Maybe he's trying to get a ruling on why they uh, called time out here. Here's a look at that fourth down play. Now keep in mind, the clock is running here. It's fourth down. The pass to the outside. And it looked from that vantage point that maybe the receiver did not get out of bounds. Well, here we go. There are five seconds left. This should be the final play. First and 10 from the 11. Lancers perhaps their last chance. They show two wide receivers to the left. Luker running out of time, throws into the end zone. And it drops incomplete, but there is still one second left. So don't go anywhere. The Lancers will get one more try. I'll tell you what, that precious second, very valuable right now to the Lancers. That's called your hometown score clock operator. And I'll tell you what, just as that ball landed is when that second tick down, another chance for St. Francis. Here we go. Barring a defensive penalty, this is the last play of the game. Luker looks to the right side of the end zone, into the oak tree, and it's out of the end zone. The ball game is over, and Skyline makes it two straight over St. Francis. Mike Chauvel caught it, but over the end line, and Skyline hangs on for the 13-7 win. What a ball game here at Ron Calcano Stadium at Brother Fisher Field. Skyline able to take it by six, and there's your celebration. Came right down to the final play of the game. We'll get another look. A corner route to the back of the end zone. Luker putting it up for grabs. Good coverage by Skyline, and the catch made but apparently out of bounds Jim Farquhar right on top of the call and the Titans win. Antonio Thompson on that coverage for the Titans who up their record to two and one but the Lancers drop to 0 and four the road doesn't get any smoother next week they host Cardinal Newman here at Brother Fisher Field but that'll be it for tonight's ball game the Lancers fall to 0 and four 
13 to 7, the final score. For our producer and director, Lazarus Sarginez, Yolanda Harmon, our technical director, Andre Polizzi on the sidelines, and Brian Burkett here in the booth. This is George Devine speaking, wishing a very pleasant good evening from Ron Calcagno Stadium on the St. Francis campus, where Skyline once again beats St. Francis 13 to 7.